Bula. Bula. I'm CBC. I'm Pinyoni. I will turn Johnny. For research video, you have chosen the plant CBM Guadzava, commonly known as Guapa. For field of study, we decided to go all the way to the interior of Tainewu, namely QS, where we carried out our research activity and our video projects. We got caught in some problems, but we managed to compile this video just for your life. Hope you guys enjoy it. Firstly, regarding Petromio uh, CBM Guadzava, commonly known as Guapa, it belongs to the domain Eukaryota and to the kingdom plant. The order is Metals and the family is Mutisi. Genus is a Cidium, species is P. Guajava or Cidium Guajava. In terms of ethnobotanical importance for human use, it's a part of this tropical country. We serve now at least this a sweet, round fruit. Wow. So, you know, the first thing is it's a fill of your belly. The second is the fruit is also used to make jam, beverage, and other foods. The third importance is the dried or dead guava plant. The hard stems are, and branches are used as firewood in most common places. Regarding medicinal uses, traditionally various parts of the plant were used as medicine. Guava leaves were used for stomach and intestinal conditions and sicknesses as well as the healing of wounds. The fruit itself was used in the lowering of high blood pressure. With regards to medicinal use, traditionally, which my colleague has mentioned already, modern findings suggest that guava has antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial properties which help maintain a healthy skin. The vitamin C content improves collagen activity, aiding in hair growth and lycopene content, which gives protection as well. I'll be talking to you about uh, special adaptations as well as uh, distribution and the diversity of the guava plant in the tropics. So uh, as you can see clearly, the guava plant is a shrub and uh, if you move up closer here, you'll be able to see clearly the flower of the guava plant. Uh, this flower um, indicates that uh, this shrub, the guava plant, is insect pollinated. Uh, some of the special adaptations that it contains uh, for insect pollination is that the flower will give off a sweet smelling scent that will attract insect pollinators and uh, as well as sticky filaments that allows for this type of pollination. Uh, another pollination in regards to this uh, method of pollination is uh, wind pollination. The flower contains uh, pollen grains, light pollen grains, and the pollen grains uh, contain aerial buds which uh, allow for the wind to carry it and uh, successfully carry out wind pollination. We are talking to you about the special adaptations for seed dispersal in the fruit. As you can see here, we managed to find uh, the fruit of the guava plant and uh, you can also clearly see in uh, this video that they are not in season right now, so that's all we could find. So in regards to the special adaptations for seed dispersal, uh, one of the major uh, major dispersal agents are uh, animals, mainly birds, is whereby they eat the fruit as they fly over other areas, they disperse the seeds in their droppings. Uh, within this area of uh, study, it is known too that uh, cows are one of the major dispersal agents. Uh, as you can see there, there's many cows in our area of study. And uh, just as uh, birds do, they also disperse the seeds in their droppings. Uh, regarding uh, distribution and diversity in the tropics, uh, it is known that the guava plant is a invasive species. This means that uh, if it is not controlled within a given population, it will outcompete uh, other species of plants. Uh, regarding whether it's endemic or not, uh, it is not endemic because it, as you can see, it is an invasive species in the tropics. Uh, regarding factors that may control its uh, distribution, uh, this may include uh, climate, uh, like uh, cyclones and other types of weather, uh, animals within the area, organisms that it interacts with, and uh, yeah. Although Sidum Gojava grows best in soil with pH between 5 and 7, it has adapted to accommodate the pH between 4.5 and 9.5. It has also been known to adapt to accommodate semi solvent so as long as the plant has good drainage, the plant will thrive. Another adaptation refers to where it has good system of water storage, so this means that it can survive through times of drought. Lastly, with a little bit of watering, regular watering, 
the plant will thrive in both humid and dry climates. Regarding defense mechanisms, it is known that sedum gojava contains sulfur volatile leaves, which uh, prevent herbivores from consuming the leaves of this plant. Some examples of these insects include mealybugs, ants, and leaf eating capsules. Today I'm going to talk to you about the vegetative morphology and reproduction of sedum gojava. Right. As you can see already, you see the height of this tree, it grows to about 3 meters to 10 meters in height. And it's a shrub, it's not over 10 meters, so it's a shrub. Uh, and it uh, produces low drooping branches from the day over here. As you can see, this branch is so low. And that's pretty much it for habit and height. Right. Now I'm going to talk to you about the leaves. The leaves grow in pairs opposite each other and are green in color as you can see. The leaf blade is elliptic and oblong in shape. It grows to about 5 to 15 centimeters long as you can see. Uh, 3 to 7 centimeters broad, finely pubescent and veined on the lower surface and glabrous on the upper surface. As you can see, it is uh, veined on the lower surface and glabrous on the upper surface. Glabrous meaning it's smooth. Now I'm going to talk to you about the stem and bark color of a guava tree. As you can see, all the stems are covered in smooth, light reddish brown. As you can see that, a bark that peels off in flakes and sometimes gives the trunks a molded appearance because the newly revealed bark is somewhat greenish or brown in color. As you can see, the new plants, the new bugs, because when the red skin peels off, the new box comes up, as you can see here. And younger stems are greenish or hairy, pubescent, and somewhat four angled or quadrangular. Right, next part, I'm going to talk to you about flowers and the fruit of the flowers. As you can see here. These are the flowers. Flowers are white in color, about 3 cm in diameter. They are solitary or in 2 to 3 flower clusters born at the axis, as you can see here. Now I'm going to talk to you about fruit. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any in our area of study because it's not in season yet. Uh, when you see a gold plant, the uh, can be rounded. Flesh shape or egg shape and contains flesh which can weigh the guava up to 500 grams. Skin color of the fruit is uh, yellowish, um, green, and uh, sometimes in some areas it also can be orange. Flesh can be white, yellow, uh, pink, and uh, red. As I mentioned, the taste can be from sour to sweet. Juicy and aromatic, it all depends on the growth of the plant. Fruit contains a variable number of seeds, uh, which can be about 3 to 5 millimeters long, and its mass cup is characterized by the presence of small and hard fiber structures called stone cells, which can be 0.1 millimeters or less. In terms of life cycle patterns, uh, flowers and uh, fruits can uh, Seeds can remain viable for months or so even up to a year. And the usual germination time is about two to three weeks, but they can take up to eight weeks. Trees grown from seeds produce fruits in two to four years with a life expectancy of 10 to 30 years. Um, in terms of reproduction, uh, this may have been mentioned also by my colleague Johnny in terms of distribution. Since uh, it produces flowers, uh, guava is an uh, angiosperm. It starts uh, producing fruit from about two to four years after fertilization. These fruits are often eaten by animals along with seeds, which passes through the digestive tract and gets dispersed into a new end. The seeds remain dormant if conditions are not favorable, but once it is favorable, 
it proceeds to germinate and produce a whole new flower plant. Also, the flowers can be pollinated by bees and other pollinators. And the fuzzy bodies of bees make pollen stick to them, and when they fly around to different flowers to eat food nectar, they leave some pollen from other flowers and seeds and pick up different pollen, effectively cross pollinating the plant. Cidium wazawa is a fast growing subtropical and tropical species which is adapted to a wide range of environmental conditions. It is tolerant of shade, a precocious and prolific reproducer with seed dispersal aided by avian and mammalian vectors. It can form dense thickets which displaces native vegetation and is reported as invasive weed in many, many countries. Balance between its uh, valuable fruit production and invasive potential requires careful monitoring. Sedium guajava thrives in both humid and dry climate. However, the optimum yield occurs in the region of mean temperature range of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and a uniform rainfall of 1000 to 2000 mm. It can grow on a wide range of soil conditions and type, or it still can form dense thickets. For our research area, the soil type is silt soil, as it is light and moisture retentive with high fertility rating, having medium-sized particles as they provide well drainage and holds moisture. Cedium guajava thrives at an altitude range of 0 to 1,500 meters. The ecological importance of Cedium guajava is it provides habitats and food environment for various types of animals, including insects like guava moths, mites, millibags, and fruit fly, and various types of birds. Including Fijian Myasomela, Jogolaris, and reptiles like lizards and mammals like bats. Sedum Gozava is an important plant in the environment which it played an important role to control erosion and it this plant is uh, used in uh, cattle industry to provide shade and shelter for the li livestock. Economic the role of a guava tree is it considered as one of the most valuable tree species in industrialization. This plant they use its fruit to generate the products like uh, juice, nectar, pulp, jam, jelly and dehydrated uh, products. When it's a country generates these uh, products they export it and they generate income for their economy. That's it from us. We hope you enjoyed our video and learn a lot about Sigim Gojava and its benefits to us and the rest of the world. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience and a big Nakamakaliwu to Sir and Madam for giving us 10 out of 10. Let's go. <laughs> Cut. <laughs>